This is my media computer. It's slow. It has a AMD Athlon LE1640, which has one core and one thread, and it also runs Windows 10. It didn't come with Windows 10, it came with Windows XP, but I forced Windows 10 on it because yes. Today I'm going to see how does a one core CPU with one thread handle web browsing and some light gaming in 2021. Let's see how this works, shall we? While Google Chrome slowly loads, let me quickly go over all the specs this computer has. The CPU is a AMD Athlon LE1640, which I mentioned earlier, with one core and one thread at 2.7 GHz. The graphics card is a NVIDIA Quadro 600 with one gigabyte of VRAM, which is equivalent to roughly a GT710, except a lot cheaper. You might be thinking, oh, well, that's, uh, you're not gonna get good frame rates. Well, there's a thing. Keep in mind the CPU we're pairing this with. It's not gonna be the problem here. It also has 6 gigabytes of DDR2, 667 megahertz RAM from a brand called ATEC. And I already know, somebody's going to be asking, John, do you have it in single or dual channel for the RAM? And it is in dual channel. There is three sticks of two gigabytes of DDR2. What you're seeing right now is how long it takes to just load the home page of YouTube and well as you see it is taking a rather long time it is loading and it is working but it is about as fast as a riding lawnmower being powered by a chipmunk but after a lot of power and determination it's able to pull through and load one web page without it completely exploding and burning down the entire state of California navigating through YouTube works but it's a bit sluggish this entire time the CPU is a steel being pegged at 100% the entire time, not even dropping down to 99% for even a second. It's just pegged at 100% and doesn't really care about it. Loading up my last video only took around 45 seconds before I started playing back, which is pretty fast for this computer actually. Playing back YouTube works, though there is some stutter, but it is a lot better than with a AMD graphics card like the HD 5450. Yes, I know the HD 5450 is super old, it's not a problem with AMD, I don't think it's just the graphics card I was pairing it with is extremely old. But basically, Google and Discord is a lot slower with the HD 5450 installed. I don't know why, but it is. Probably some sort of hardware acceleration is missing with the HD 5450. With the HD 5450, the YouTube maxes out around 360p before it starts stuttering like crazy. On here, it's around 1080p with the Quadro 600. Still not great, but it does definitely work pretty good if you have a 1080p monitor, which I would assume you would if you have this computer. The only downside is that 1080p it does stutter a little bit, though you can easily get rid of the stutter by taking it down to around 480p or even 720p. Granted, 720p doesn't completely get rid of it, but 480p mostly gets rid of it, unless you got like Windows Update in the background or something. I also tried to go and load some other websites like Reddit, and it actually loaded pretty quickly. Okay, when I say pretty quickly, I mean about 45 seconds, but that is still pretty quick for this kind of computer. Granted, I know a Celeron or a Pentium from 2020 would definitely be a ton faster than this. Hmm, let's add some Twitter into the mix. And the CPU is flat out pegged at 100%. Twitter as well took roughly one minute to load, which is still pretty slow to say the least. Loading the forecast for Omicron Russia is also rather cold. It took Cold? I mean, it is cold there, but that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Loading the website for Oinikan Russia forecast is quite slow, but it did actually do it a lot faster because I wasn't loading into any extra websites besides just Google. Then loading weather.com was also somewhat snappy. It only took around 10 seconds to load the website. Also, I should mention, most of the footage you are seeing is sped up. Also, I don't know if you saw, but there is actually a timer down to the left of the monitor if you want to see how long something takes to load. Opening the more detailed button for every single day of the week, forecast did work, but it was quite sluggish. I decided to try to load Twitch, and it took around a minute and 10 seconds to load, which is slow. It's the slowest website so far to load, but in the end, it did eventually open. On Twitch, even after it was done loading the website, it was still extremely sluggish, because it was trying to play back live streams. As you see, the CPU is still pegged at 100% the entire time, not dropping in the absolute slightest. I think it is time to try to do some gaming on this, and the keyword here is try. This might be completely unplayable. Loading up Minecraft was quite slow, but eventually the game did open. I would try to play single player Minecraft, though the issue here is that I literally cannot open a single player world. What happens when I try to create or log into a single player world is it loads, it loads, it loads, it loads, it loads, and it loads some more, and then it stops loading and just basically sits there forever and doesn't open. I've let it for about six hours in the past and it hasn't opened up the world. So instead, I will be playing on the Cubecraft server because the Cubecraft server has a nice mix 
between intensive parts of Minecraft like the spawn and also some easy parts of Minecraft like Sky Wars, where there's not that much to load. Alright, so I have all of the video settings in Minecraft set to the absolute minimum, besides the FOV. I know turning the FOV all the way down does sometimes help the frame rate, but if you're playing a PvP server, or just Minecraft in general, having 30 FOV is not really good, because you need to be able to see around you. So, walking around spawn, I am getting 20 frames per second, which is not really a good sign, because this is on a server. If the world actually loaded, what frame rate would I be getting on there? 5? I don't know, this is not good. And also, that 20 frames per second is actually when I'm not looking at something intensive. If I'm looking at something intensive, it drops to around 7 to 10 frames per second, which is rather, I gotta say, that that's unplayable at that point. And we are getting a huge CPU bottleneck here. So, the CPU is pinned at 100% the entire time, and the graphics card is around 20 to 30. So, the graphics card has a 10 more it can give besides 10 to 20 frames per second. I was just wandering around the map, and I decided to go to the absolute corner of the Cubecraft server, and I was getting around 26 to 30 frames per second there, which is definitely playable at that point. Still not great, but at least it is better than nothing. I decided to hop into a match of Sky Wars, and it was getting between 17 and 40 frames per second, so it was a stuttery but working mess. And also, it's playable to the point where I cannot blame this death on lag. This is genuinely just me not able to play the game and falling into the void like a nub. I decided to play another match of Sky Wars, and I'm usually somewhat decent at it, though I can successfully blame a death on lag, okay? There's nothing I could have done in this situation. So that is definitely not good. So it's definitely not meant to play Sky Wars. And yes, I actually did die. Then I decided to get into a 1v1 PvP battle, and it was doing quite well. It was getting around 30 frames per second. Then I hopped on to Minecraft Java with the Sodium mod, and just setting up Minecraft Java alone with the Sodium mod took around 28 minutes. Once I loaded, I put it on the lowest settings, and I hopped on to a single player world, and I was getting one frame per second. And I thought, hmm, maybe Minecraft is just getting one frame per second because it is trying to load stuff in. So I just sat there AFK for a while, and came back, and yep, the game was still at one frame per second. It was not loading anything in. It just simply can't play Minecraft Java on a single player world. And no, the Quadro 600 is not slowing the game down in the slightest. The Quadro 600 can get around 220-ish frames per second on Minecraft Java Edition, paired with a good CPU. Then I hopped on to my single player Minecraft Java server, and it was a really, really stuttery at first. After a few minutes though, it did end up clearing up and was somewhat playable. When I say somewhat playable, I mean it was stuttering and stopping for several seconds at times, though it was getting some highs above one frame per second. More around five frames per second. Then I decided to play one of the lightest games I know of, and that is Roblox Zombie Attack. I set the game onto the lowest settings, and I also am using a frame rate cap of 30. The reason why is if I do not use a frame rate cap of 30, the game starts giving humongous input lag. I got an average of around 20 frames per second, with lows down to around 3 to 5, and highs up to around 27. It is really rare when it hits 30. You might have thought every single game game I'm going to be playing today is going to be unplayable, and you're wrong if you thought that, because this game I actually do consider playable. Yes, I know it is only getting 20 to 30 frames per second, but that's almost all you need on this game. It is actually a somewhat pleasant experience. I once sat down and played this game for several hours on this computer, and it worked pretty good. I did die a few times from lag, but it wasn't the end of the world. I decided to try to do some benchmarking. When I say benchmarking, I just mean running Cinebench R23. This normally wouldn't be that that big of a daunting task on something like an i7-3770K, though this is a rather slow CPU as you have already found out, so it took a really long time. Now I do not think I have to actually say this, but this is actually a time lapse of Cinebench R23 completing this score, and the video is sped up so much that 2-3 to three minutes of actual time is sped up to around 1 second, and this time it was actually slower than its average and got a score of 164, normally gets around a score of 190. Here is a weird fun story. So, I was curious what the slowest possible Cinebench R23 score is, could even get below 100. So what I decided to do was set Cinebench R23 to the lowest priority in the Windows Task Manager, then I went over and played back a 720p YouTube video on loop for around 24 hours, and I actually managed to get a score of 24, yes, 24 in Cinebench R23. I don't even know how that's possible, but that is a 
absurdly low score. Also, I am sorry for a lack of game benchmarks in this video, because this CPU can actually run other games. Not well, but it can run games like New World, even though it doesn't meet the minimum requirements. This video wasn't actually intended to be a AMD Athlon LE 1640 review in 2022. Instead, it was supposed to be a how does this CPU compare to a Phenom 9150E. The reason why it actually isn't that video is because I tried upgrading the CPU and I got the CPU in the motherboard, but I realized something when I flipped the switch. The fans were at 100% and the power button didn't even work if I held it down for 5 seconds to shut the computer off. This motherboard does not support this CPU. I got help from somebody upgrading the BIOS on this motherboard and that didn't fix the problem. But I actually can upgrade the CPU on here still. I can put a AMD Athlon X2 6000 Plus in here. I might in the future get that 6000 Plus and try to put it through its paces and see how it games in 2022. And of course I would pair it with a better graphics card than the Quad or 600. I would most likely pair it with a RTX 3060 to see what the CPU is actually capable of. Who knows? Maybe it will be the next budget gaming CPU. Probably not, but you know, it's a nice thought. Also, I just thought I should mention something funny. So if you have ever worked on an AMD CPU before, you'd know you have to go over and have the lever 90 degrees up so you can get the CPU out. Well, I actually didn't know that, and I just unlatched the lever but didn't have it pointing straight up, and I was sitting there trying to get the CPU out of the socket for about 15 minutes. Thanks to the guy who helped me update the BIOS because he also helped me go over and get the CPU out of the socket because I wasn't sure what to do. Either way, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you again next time.